It's fine, no? Yes, this is fine. So, uh, Amarjit, Durga is here, who is going to take your interview. Okay. And Durga, Amarjit is the person who sure. is having the experience over the Java and uh, as per the required skill sets, Azure and all. So, you can start taking the interview. Allow me and Priyanka to leave this call and you both can go ahead accordingly. Yeah. Thanks, Ajit. Thank, Thank you, Durga. Yeah, hi, Durga. Hey, Amarjit. Um... Some background noise, Amajit. Okay, just a minute. Now it's fine? Yeah, it's fine. Good morning. Okay. Uh, this is Durga Prasad. Uh, like as Rajat mentioned, I'll be taking your domain round up interview. I have total 11 years of experience in IT and the ITS into Optum. Okay. Uh, this is for one of the position in Optum with um, like Azure and Spring Boot Tech Stack. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, would you like to introduce yourself? Maybe I want some details like um, your latest project and then tech stack. Sure. Uh, thank you for asking. So, my name is Amarjit. I am having uh, uh, I am having uh, seven years of experience. So, currently I am doing uh, customization as well as implementation based on the client requirement. So, the technology which I used uh, is a Java with a Spring Boot microservices, a Spring Cloud component as a backend also have some of the exposures in front end coming for this that uh, uh, AWS cloud uh, coming for the cloud I have good experience in AWS cloud so most of the services I used and also have a database knowledge like a spring uh, sorry SQL and MongoDB and also all the DevOps tools I use most of which is required for the development and deployment monitoring the application like Apache Maven Jenkins Zira GitHub ELKS Plunks and all yeah, so these all are the technology stack which I have coming for the domain like I have good experience in the domain like uh, banking, telecom, e-commerce and health insurance. So right now I'm working for the health insurance. So the project is nothing but it's a portal where we can provide a customer to come and then take uh, whatever insurance he want. After that we will process the multiple business logic in that so that the users can get the notification, redemptions, payment calculations and all the order details and all like that. So mostly we are working for this microservices based architecture so here we are following agile so based on the agile whatever the sprint will be defined in that we need to develop a microservices applications uh, so my role and responsibility here like uh, on daily basis developing a microservices based application by using a spring boot and uh, java and also while uh, we are uh, developing then we'll have uh, some third party communications and all call will be there that need to be communicate so for that we used rest template and uh, kafka for messaging queue and all uh, apart from this while we are developing the services and all in that cases uh, that will go for the different uh, deployment of multiple uh, environment so while it will go for the production environment there we can check all the configuration detail whatever the changes happen from my side that we can surety for this deployment is going for the production so that our production deployment will go as smooth once deployment will complete it then we have to check all the request response is coming proper or not whatever the log is printing is fine proper or not so that things we can uh, check from our side so we will be available on call yeah so that Mm, these all are the things we are doing on daily basis. Uh, you mentioned about Azure, but you are saying like you have experience on AWS, but uh, you mentioned in your resume that you have hands-on exper hands experience on Azure as well. Azure also I have. Azure I have uh, some of the one years of experience in that, but mostly in this AWS I am uh, more than enough Azure experience, so that's why I mentioned. Okay, so Azure, what are all the services that you have used in Azure? Uh, Azure, which I used mostly as a... Mostly I use like uh, this one, uh, event pub subs I use and then log log analytics I used. And uh, uh, mostly these things mostly used for the event handler and uh, tracing the logs and monitoring that purpose I used Azure. Uh, what do you mean by event pub sub? I mean, which service uh, you are talking about? Uh, in Azure's have a like a pub publisher subscribers. Uh, the services name is there. Uh, while we are creating a event handler, so we'll have a 
event based applications uh, we can handle through the azure event based applications we can handle through while we are creating our web subs and all uh, public sir and subscriber that we handle uh, the service exactly i'm not able to remind that one uh, and log analytics services are used for this logging monitoring the logs or backend applications which is deployed in there how to convert a json object that you have like added into logs using custom query sorry i mean log analytic workspace uh, that you have used for monitoring right yes, yes, the, for example if i like i mean there is a scenario like i add a a uh, logger message as a json object mm -hmm. to uh, log analytic like workspace uh, to like traces table or whatever mm -hmm. then uh, how do i parse it i want to uh, uh, take a scenario like uh, there is a json structure with the member details like member id member name member first name member last name etc mm -hmm. okay uh, i want summary of calls from a particular member in a day how do you do that in in log analytics uh log analytics uh, we can do it uh how which uh, uh while we are cre uh, configuring this uh, uh, azos uh, log analytics workspace there will have uh, options to filter and uh, add some criteria uh, to fetch the details no no i am saying like do you know how to uh play around the data inside azure log analytic workspace like you have let us say you have filtered everything and you have added logs to log analytic mm -hmm. but you need to search something right like why do you reuse logs to monitor something for example mm -hmm. if customer comes back and say there is an issue you need to investigate it like what is that issue or where it happened or how it happened etc by using the logs then how do you filter out like how do you fetch that particular logger statement for that member Uh, actually, I'm not so right now for this. Uh, um, right now. Okay, no, it's fine. Um, uh, and uh, uh, you said Spring Boot microservices, right? Are you using like which service are you using to deploy these Spring Boot microservices? Where are you deploying this? Spring Mostly, I used uh, AWS Cloud for the deployments and all. So. Mm -hmm. while creating okay. uh, while creating a spring boot application that will be jenkins ci cd will be automated create a, a docker image and all and after that we'll have a, a aws services is a ec2 instance there we are doing a deployments now okay okay um uh, can you explain some of the appendices in log4j log4j xml uh appenda appends in log for the right uh, we'll have a error warning debug uh, fatals no, no. is there no 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 i'm talking about different types of appenders mm -hmm. uh yeah appenders is there like uh, the day uh, before the logs printing what are the format need to be like uh, either date no. will be printed or maybe date format no 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 appenders are like file appender console appender app insert appender those sort of things right Okay. Okay. Um. So, for example, if you want to call one microservice from other microservice, yeah. Um. Uh, how do you do that using Spring integration? Yeah. So while using Spring integrations, we can call multiple microservices uh, by using REST template or Kafka. So REST template or REST web web services will have a uh, sync communications. like uh, at a time only one request we no no, no no i'm i'm saying like uh, without using rest template uh, is there Kaf any way to kafka call? is there event handler is there so like a kafka we have a messaging queue or in revit tem no, no no i am talking about calling one microservice from other microservice without using rest template okay so How message messaging queue is there uh, is that how do you use message queue to call one microservice from other microservice uh we will create a cluster of kafka and mm -hmm. there uh, a, a other my one microservice will produce the data whatever the data is there coming based on the topic id and all 
topic oh, i mean i'm saying like in my scenario mm-hmm. let us say there is a service developed by some other system mm-hmm. you don't know who that is or you don't know what is their logic or how they have implemented they just provided you an endpoint okay okay you need to call that endpoint by using the required data that need to be passed to that endpoint to get the required data back from that api and i don't want to use rest template what are the other ways that you can use to call that api web client you know that uh, spring web flux is a uh, uh, providing as a web client uh, by using mono and flux we can do um how do you update properties dynamically uh, so, spring. yeah so what? in that cases what will have a spring cloud configuration uh, services will be there that service will have a okay. uh, store all the property file so okay. so that all the property file will be there so suppose if you are doing any changes in your uh, Uh, in your uh, master file or uh, in your applic microservices, so they will call the property updations. If property has been updated, then that will be or uh, uh, Spring Cloud Config will be uh, uh, update or maybe directly you can update also through the Spring Cloud Config server also, and it will be refresh automatically uh, on simultaneously without any restarting servers and. how does it happen like how it happens without restarting like what technology are you i mean do you need to use or what configurations do you need to use to reflect the properties automatically yeah so in that uh, while you are writing a spring cloud config server so that server will have a property file then property file will have a auto refresh uh, uh auto refresh configurations which need to be enabled as a true i mean uh that is spring cloud whatever you are saying mm-hmm. but i am saying that for example let us say your application is running with five parts or something mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. the particular property gets updated into your five parts okay five parts in no i will write a script for that that automated script will be there which will be update any update has updation will come so they will uh, update all the can you explain uh, about the script like i mean how do you write or what script you write uh, uh in a script will write like uh, or maybe will have a profiling also will be there based no, on the profiling will always be there hmm. profiling will always be there but like, i mean when you say script how do you execute that script i mean what script you write like what language you write uh language uh, will have a uh, maybe i think python or maybe no, you are guessing some... you are guessing or you know how to do that to that i am not sure but i am mostly okay 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 um if i have to call multiple microservices in parallel mm-hmm. how do you do that like how do i uh, achieve that if i will call multiple microservices in parallel okay Uh, we can use based on uh, this async asynchronous mechanism so that asynchronous mechanism either will have a event based messaging based or maybe uh, flux based mono and flux is there in web flux so that way do you know threads threads also yeah threads so that is uh, thread will have a a synchronization and asynchronization so if you want a multiple microservices need to be accessed so asynchronization thread will be the part of that through that we can access how do you how do you instantiate uh, uh like thread pool executor ah uh, yeah thread pool executor uh, uh will have a multiple uh, thread no 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 give me the syntax for instantiating thread pool executor okay so thread pool uh t to thread pool t p dot execute um 
can you tell me some of the disadvantages with Spring Boot microservices? Uh, Spring Boot also have a multiple advantage and disadvantage are there. So disadvantage like uh, um, Uh, disadvantage like uh, uh, we will divide it in the different different uh, uh, scenarios or uh, business requirement with the different teams so you may not able to understand full requirement of the particular services uh, and uh, no that that will be like internal to how do you manage but in general overall if you go with spring boot microservices like are there any generic disadvantages I, and yeah, the, you are you are in, the, in terms of like functionality wise function, or something yes. yeah. but that should be solved by within your com organization or something but I mean, in general if you go with spring boot microservices mm -hmm. Uh, then uh, while we go for this. like we have a multiple annotations and uh, starters which has came uh, so through that we are uh, creating a project by using a starter or maybe annotation some of the customization annotations will be there Um, you do you know about actuator endpoints? Yeah, actuator endpoint will have a, uh, to check the metrics of the applications. We'll have a log, trash, and then health metrics and all, so that we can check through the actuator while we configure actuator in microservice or a Spring Boot application. So based on the trash ID and all, we can. Find this. So no, no, actuator is not just for that. Actuator endpoints are there are many other advantages with that. Uh, refresh scope is there, which is used to refresh the properties of the configurations or something. Um, um, so the it's not just for monitoring or pro. Yeah, yeah, there are multiple uh, things are there in actuator. So, but mostly which I use, these all are the configurations and all based I used. 